much, everyone. Thank you, Tejas, so much for your kindness. Um, how is everyone doing? <laughs> Woo! Woo! OK. Uh, these past two talks were pretty phenomenal. Um, it, uh, they are going to be very difficult to follow. Um, I am super excited to be here. Uh, this is actually my first live talk. Um, so oh, thank you. So thank you so much to everyone for being here. Um, so let's begin. One second. Where, what happened to my screen? OK, here. So let's begin. Um, OK. I'm Sylvia Vargas, as you already know. I'm a front-end engineer, but I also run developer relations at StackBlitz. Um, you can f become friends of mine by talking to me or by following me uh, on Twitter at Sylvia Vargas. Be careful, there is a W. <laughs> um, I want to tell you today about some of the inspiring and mind-blowing projects that I've seen recently and how you can build them as well. So I will be, a lot, I will be talking a lot about this uh, technology called web containers. So maybe we should define them. So web containers uh, are a browser-based runtime created by StackBlitz for executing Node.js apps and operating uh, system commands entirely in your browser. So those are words, a lot of words. And if you're not an, an, a native English speaker, most probably they are just, they just sounds. So <laughs> let me show you what, what I mean by that. Um, so here's a website. Actually, it so happens it's a documentation website for web containers. And there's a web container running here as well. And so you can think, oh, yeah, this is just some CSS situation here. But actually, if I do run um, index.js, it actually runs. And I can also you know, check the files. And so you can actually now see that this is an actual Node.js app running on the website. So let's get, let's get back to the presentation. So web containers were introduced in May 2021, but we, ha we already had been dogfooding that, um, that uh, technology for a few months. For example, here's a podcast where two of my colleagues um, just demoed uh, web containers impromptu. Um, if you're a person who actually prefers to just explore things by doing, you can just go to this uh, URL, webcontainers.new, and try it yourself. Meanwhile, I'll talk, uh, talk to you more about this technology. So web containers power StackBeats Classic Editor. So for example, if you need a quick demo, you can spin up a whole uh, environment in just a few seconds. For example, here's a quick, quick demo. Um, or you can <laughs> use it to enhance your documentation. Here you see an, an embedded um, code editor. Or you can also use it to enhance your educational content. Here is a very good course uh, with an embedded uh, editor. And finally, you can also use it uh, in reproductions. Um, so here you can see that there is a reproduction with StackBits. So since we already have the reproduction inside the browser with just one link, why don't we take a step further and fix it also inside the browser? So we actually have a tool for that. It's called CodeFlow. Um, in, all throughout GitHub, there are different projects that already adopted CodeFlow. And so when you click on a button like this, you can either investigate a bug or you can review a PR. So when you click on this button, what's going to happen is the entire environment with this dev server running will boot up. And also, you will have all your um, recommended extensions. As you see, this is VS Code version. <laughs> uh, it actually runs inside the browser with the dev server. So this means that you no longer have to you know, clone a PR, stash your changes, and risk the safety of your machine. You can do that, you can do that with just one click inside your browser. So now that we are, have this like, pretty awesome technology that allows us to do you know, just like, like unthinkable things, we were thinking about how could we enable you to let your imagination run free or uh, to help you bend the limitations of the internet. So how do we do that? Let me ask you that. <laughs> Show of hands, uh, who here has seen this talk by Rich Harris? 
Okay, I see some people. Um, so it was the stock at the GS Nation in Amsterdam last year, uh, which uh, Rich Harris started off with a sea shanty sing-along. It was very 2022, and if you haven't seen it, you know you can, uh, you should definitely go and watch it and also sing along. But um, in this very talk, Rich Harris also presented the new tutorial for SvelteKit. SvelteKit is a full stack framework. The idea for this tutorial was that um, it will meet the users where they are, meaning in the browser. Um, this is how the tutorial looks, and it runs in web containers. So users no longer have to set up their environment. Um, they, they can just enjoy the learning experience. So this was in June 2022, and as a launch, it was quite successful. But um, we took then six months to um, consult different community members, work closely with them, and get a lot of feedback, iterate on the API to make it really pleasant to use, and then to build uh, terrific docs. So actually, if you go to this website, um, if you go to the website, here there's a tutorial, and you can, there's a step-by-step -step, uh, yeah, tutorial that uh, guides you through building your first web container app. And so we released this um, in February this year, and it's free for open source and also for uh, small-scale businesses, just like any uh, stack-based offering. So the response from the community was pretty awesome. I'll, and uh, let me show you some of the examples. It was difficult to choose. Um, so for example, here we have a Svelte Lab, which is a supercharged REPL for Svelte. And actually, it also features Vim key bindings, which is great for those of you who can use it, and also those of us who just enjoy the escape room. Um, speaking of fun, um, here's also a visual programming app, Nato, that, that's running web containers. Um, then we also have, um, there, there's a plethora of playgrounds, for example, here from Builder. Um, we also have, of course, then we also have the AI um, kind of implementation. Uh, so this is actually very interesting. It only took three days to create what you will see in a second. So I realized that the video is a little bit blurry, but you will get the idea. The prompt reads, uh, make a site with a Unicode a heart emoji bouncing in the center using HTML and CSS, serve with Express. So me reading this prompt actually took longer than uh, executing this. So that means basically that we're gonna be unemployed soon, uh, <laughs> which is great because the next thing I want to show you that was built with web containers uh, was, uh, is this low-code tool for editing documentation. Um, so you no longer need to really know how to code uh, to see, you know, the changes implemented um, there. So, of course, I'm telling you about all these projects that are pretty awesome, and I'm telling you that you yourself can actually build it. I am saying that with high level of confidence because I've seen people who are not really uh, very experienced build things. But I also want to just take a second and talk to you about, um, about what this technology is and decisions that we took to build it. So when building web containers, we were building for today and for the future. Um, in 2018, um, Eric Simons and Albert Pai, our co-founders, they, they are also childhood friends, uh, they were joined with, uh, by two engineers, Dominik Elm and Tomek Sukowski. Dominik Elm was uh, working on web container and Tomek on product. Uh, a few years later, now, uh, the people who are working on web containers uh, are looking like this. <laughs> and actually, uh, Quinton and Sam are here with me. They came here to meet you all. So if you want to talk to them, uh, they are sitting there. Um, and thank you for coming here to support me. Um, so at this point, there's always someone who's like, okay, what's, a big, what's such a big deal uh, about, uh, what's so difficult about running Node.js inside the browser? Now, I want to manage your expectations. This is only a lightning talk, so I don't have too much time to talk about this. But the short story would be that there is an API mismatch. It's because Node.js was designed to run on the server, and a browser environment is designed to work with browser APIs. So for example, uh, things like file system are not so, uh, are, are difficult, because um, browsers do not care about file systems. And so if you think about it, 
um, you know, oftentimes when companies just announce, you know, the next thing that they build, they just say, hey, this is a thing we built. But it's not like that. This is not a straightforward thing. There is a lot of, a tremendous effort of, engineering effort of bringing something to fruition. So um, here, um, for example, for us, that meant that we had to write a file system which involved three iterations. We had to implement ES modules um, to be spec compliant, which, for example, meant that they would have to uh, correctly handle circular imports. We had to implement event loop, um, creating our own package manager, which actually now we are sunsetting because we have native support for uh, package managers. Uh, we had to implement uh, service internals, which are uh, V8's uh, implementation, I mean, a serialization and deserialization API. And finally, we had to also figure out how to run shell commands and how to integrate Vit, uh, uh, Git, Vit as well. <laughs> so that means developing for the future means uh, making a lot of difficult uh, decisions and educated decisions. So for example, even though the spec for WASM threads only now has reached stage three um, to becoming a standard, this has been, a, this has been um, a part of web containers for a very long time. You can read about that at this excellent blog post from my colleague, Roberto Vidal. S connected to that is the so-called modern uh, JavaScript feature, shared array buffer, uh, which allows multiple JavaScript threads to share the same memory space, making everything quicker. This was a very difficult decision because we knew that initially that will mean that uh, web containers will not run on Safari. But hey, in December, we were actually already able to run WebKit. And then in January, um, with Safari TP, many of the projects were already running out of the box. And today, you can actually take web containers uh, on the plane and code you know, your app on an iPod. Why on the plane? Because you don't need Wi-Fi once you've resolved dependencies. So listen, what can I tell you? Uh, webcontainers.new, try it yourself. Uh, I'm Sylvia Vargas. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or dreams of wishes or, or wishes, just come talk to me. Um, you can find me at Sylvia Vargas or, you know, if you're on somewhere else, you can also see, uh, find me at sylvia.bluesky. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. <laughs>